This is my illustration. As you can see, I'm very slow at drawing. Whenever there's a trend I want to hop on, by the time that I finish drawing, the trend has already passed. And this is Umi Bozu, a renowned Japanese character illustrator who is pretty fast at drawing, as you can see from her Twitter and YouTube, where she often does this two hours drawing challenge, and it made me wonder if I can also draw faster if I were to understand some of her techniques. So in this video, I'll be studying Umi Bozu's 120 minutes challenge video and applying what I've learned into my own two hours attempt, showing you how Umi Bozu's technique can help you build confidence and draw faster. To understand Umi Bosu's techniques better, I decided to follow along with her time-lapse video. So here are some of my takeaways from the study. There are three steps when it comes to the line art. First, Umi Bosu drew the rough, then the anatomy guide to help with corrections. With this, Umi Bosu now has a solid foundation to start drawing the line art on top. Following these three steps can ensure a strong foundation for an accurate line art. But I found this to be a bit too difficult for me since I don't have much anatomy knowledge. So to fix this, having photographs of 3D models as references on the sides could help make this process easier, as you'll see later on in my two hours attempt. When it comes to coloring, Imi Bosu starts rendering each part separately, one at a time. Starting with the skin, then hair, eyes, and clothes. For me, having to color every part of the image simultaneously is much more stressful. So I found that by doing this, the whole process becomes less overwhelming, which allowed me to draw continuously without feeling stress or burnout. While doing this follow-along study, I've roughly mapped out Umi Bosu's layers into this guide, which I'll be following along for my two hours attempt. This may also be helpful for those who perhaps want to try something similar. The areas around the focal point tends to be more detailed, while areas further away tend to use thicker brushes and feel less refined. This technique creates a sense of depth and pulls the viewer's attention to the focal points. Not having to add details to certain parts like the clothes also saves a lot of time. I especially love how Umi Bosu goes over the hair with fine brush strokes. This is another effective way to swiftly add details to the hair. By emphasizing on the hair, the viewer's attention is further pulled towards the focal point of the illustration. Umi Bosu uses various brushes from hard brush to soft brush to textured brush. Hard brush is great for creating sharp lines and details, while soft brush is great for blending and gradients. And the textured brush can be used to mimic the texture of material such as the cloth. I find that choosing the right brush for the job can help save time and improve the quality of your work. It's not a must, but it does make your life a little easier. Here are some of the techniques for finishing off your illustration. Screen blend mode was used to add glow to the illustration. This adds depth and a sense of realism to the image. Stroke effects was used to give shadows a thin outline. I think this was done to perhaps mimic the core shadow effect. Lastly, Ibi Bosu saves time by creating new layers on top and drawing on top of the mistakes. This may not be ideal for complex illustrations, but in a two hour scenario, drawing over the mistake is much faster than going through each layer in order to fix the mistakes. And those were my five main takeaways from following along with Ibi Bosu. Here's mine compared to the original. By doing this, I got a better grasp at Umi Bosu's workflow and techniques in order to not only draw faster, but to draw more efficiently as well. And with that done, I'm now ready to jump right into doing my own two hours attempt and use what I've learned to see if it'll help me draw faster. Honestly, drawing just two hours? How hard can that be?
These were my outcomes from attempting the two hours challenge. And wow, that was not fun at all. I was not expecting the two hours to run out that fast. With the first two, I was constantly unsure of what to do next. Only at the third attempt did I finally develop a workflow that I was comfortable with. Having a workflow that you can rely on is a huge time saver. It's important to note that I had many references on the sides, and I also did a quick thumbnail beforehand. So I guess it's more like a 2.5 hours attempt with all the preparations. My absolute favorite technique from studying Ubibosu has got to be adding thin lines to the hair to quickly create details. The hair was just gradients, some lights and shadows, and a bunch of thin lines. And that turned out way better than I expected. Although doing these two hours drawing was pretty horrible and not that enjoyable, I did find it really rewarding after finishing each illustration. And I think it's an effective exercise for building confidence in drawing, which is a skill that I'm desperately lacking. So I decided to keep going and do a couple more. And to mix things up, I will be applying my own tips and tricks from some of my previous videos into these next attempts. To see if I still remember the things I learned from my previous studies. So for this one, I decided to focus on using Multiply Blend Mode as a method of quickly adding shadows to the illustration. This was a technique that I first learned through my Ask study. After finishing the line art and base color, I started roughly blocking in the shadows using Multiply Blend Mode. Although the style was different, Ubibosu's technique still worked really well here. I don't think I've ever finished an illustration in one day before, so being able to bring my ideas to life in just two hours was very liberating. Next, I played around with the colors of the shadow, to see which one fit the mood that I was going for. Last thing to do was to add some details to the shadows, things like occlusion shadows and bounce light. I did this using clipping mask, but lock transparent pixels also works. By the end, this was how the shadow layer looked when separated from the base color. So by using this method, you can essentially paint in shadows using just one layer. And this was the outcome of this two hours attempt. And here's after giving it 30 more minutes. Now that we've used Multiply to add shadows, I wanted to do the opposite and use hard light to add light. This was a technique that I first learned from my Hanamori study, which I will be using to replicate a harsh lighting scenario. This time, instead of starting with a light base color and adding shadows, I'm starting with a darker base color and adding light. I use this method as a quick way of blocking in light and seeing how it affects the layers underneath. The next thing to do is to add shadows to the rest of the image. So in a way, hard light is another method of speeding up your workflow, just like Multiply Blend Mode. I finished off the illustration by adding saturated lines and subsurface scattering for stylization. Lastly, using screen mode and soft brush, I added some glows to dramatize the lighting. And this was the outcome of this two hours attempt. And here's after adjusting it for 40 more minutes. For this attempt, I wanted to apply some of the techniques from my roller study. Techniques such as stroke effects, inner glow, coloring with curves, and LUTs. The line art is a crucial component for achieving roller's signature style, but for me, it's also one of the toughest things to do. If I were to do this again, I would redo the whole hair and eyes. This is because Roller has a very distinct way of drawing hair and eyes, which I was unable to replicate in this attempt. Since Roller used Photoshop to do the coloring, I decided to do the same thing. So after finishing the line art and adding a gray base color, I exported my files into Photoshop. For coloring, I simply followed Roller's timeless video. The pink light on the hair had an inner glow effect applied to it. So when you erase the layers with a pressure-sensitive eraser, the inner colors is revealed. This is one of Roller's clever way of creating a light fall-off effect of sorts. Next, I went crazy with the stroke effects to create these stylized strands of hair. Okay, may maybe a little too crazy here. And finish off the illustration with Roller's weird wacky techniques. And here's the outcome after two hours, and here's after giving it one more hour. And another hour. Wait, what happened to two hours? Why is it getting longer? After a dark, grungy illustration, for the next attempt, I wanted to go the opposite direction and create a clean, minimalistic illustration. For this one, I wanted to recall techniques from my Kei Mochizuki study. The focus were on the saturated colors and the thick line art for that graphic look. I tried to keep things minimal by using only three colors, blue, purple, and yellow. The coloring techniques used in this illustration was the simplest by far. 
I kept things simple by coloring with a soft brush to create a glow effect for things like shadows and accent colors. I was also checking the values from time to time, making sure that the image had decent contrast. As I finished off the illustration, I made minor adjustments to balance out the colors. The minimalistic design of the illustration made the colors the focal point, allowing the colors to take the center stage and really shine. So I might have forgotten about the two hours limit. So here's the illustration at two hours, three hours, and five hours. When I did that study on Mogun, one thing that caught my attention was how he drew backs. I've never drew backs before, so I wanted to try it out for this one. I blocked in the shadows using the multiply method. I thought that the techniques from my tummy coloring video could also work for the back, so that's what I did here. Using the blend tool, I smudged the edges to give it a soft look. The skin was just three layers, bright base color, darker shadow, and soft surface scattering. This was also similar for the rest of the image. Then adjusted the shadow colors to achieve my desired outcome. For the style, I was trying to recreate Rudido's soft pastel look. I did that by keeping the contrast of the colors really low and gave the overall colors a slight pinkish hue. And here's the outcome. I did this whole video on Mika Picasso's pop illustration techniques, but I haven't applied those techniques in my own illustrations yet, so that's what I'll be doing for this attempt. I was really struggling with the composition and the line art for this one, so the line art itself took almost two hours to do. I find it much easier to start with the grayish base color, keeping only the primary color, in this case purple, the most saturated, and gradually increase the saturation of other colors as I progress. In order to give the illustration a mixture between graphic and watercolor style, I colored parts like skin and hair with a watercolor brush, while parts like clothes were just solid colors. The colors were lacking some liveliness, so I added a pop of hot pink to change that. Once everything is in place, I start introducing more and more accessories to give this illustration a chaotic yet playful feel. Finally, I brought in Lamb's style by incorporating his signature graphic accessories. I did that by creating vector elements in Illustrator and also reusing some from my previous illustrations to then scatter around the character. The arrangements of the accessories weren't completely random. I used a golden ratio grid to arrange accessories in a way that directs the viewer's sight to the focal point, which is the eye. I don't know if this actually works, but it felt pretty cool doing it like this. The combination of painterly style of skin and hair contrasts really well with the solid graphic elements. This was my first time that I've created an illustration of this style, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. There's just something unique and oddly satisfying about it. And last but not least, halftones. And here's how this illustration turned out. In any case, there's no doubt that this study and challenge helped me draw faster. Maybe it's something to do with tackling perfectionism, having a clear workflow in mind, or helping you enter a flow state, or maybe a combination of all three. So feel free to give this challenge a try, whether it's two hours, one hour, or just 30 minutes. I won't always be aiming to complete my illustrations in two hours, but I will definitely be doing this from time to time as practice. If you have any artists you would like to suggest, feel free to leave it in the comments below. Thanks for watching.